My name is Terry Shima, mm -hmm. and I'm the executive director of the Japanese American Veterans Association. Okay. Maybe you just spell your name for me so that if we have to. Second cap, you want me to wear it? Oh, do you want to? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, can you tell me what it means to revisit the, uh, the Civil Liberties Act of 1988? The Civil Liberties Act of 1988 is actually, in my, my view, the culmination of all the work that was uh, sacrifices. Uh, that was put forth by the World War II generation of Japanese Americans and also the uh, members of the Japanese uh, community who served in the armed forces in the Korean War and the Vietnam War. And I'll tell you why. Why is because the 100th Battalion and the 442nd Regimental Combat Team went to war in combat to prove their loyalty. And they proved it convincingly. When the war began, all Japanese Americans were condemned as, en as enemy aliens. Fighters and bombers as pilots and 
evidence. What, and what they proved was they could, they could compete with the best of them. All jobs in the armed forces. And whereas in World War II, the highest rank that they achieved was a major. In the, in the Korean and Vietnam Wars, there were colonels, full colonels, lieutenant colonels. But it stopped there. Now, after the Vietnam War, you would have 35 Japanese Americans who would be promoted to generals and admirals. And uh, with one uh, being chief of staff of the United States Army, a job once held by General George C. Marshall, very four stars. What I'm saying is that this is all of these factors, these factors into this background for the passage of the Civil Liberties Act 1988. I, I, I believe that were it not for the sacrifices made by the World War II generation in, in the European theater and the Pacific theater, the Civil Liberties Act will not be, as we see it today, possible. Can you, uh, can you just sort of briefly just list your involvement in bringing civil, uh, the Civil Liberties Act to bear? I mean, in, uh, in no, I cannot. The reason is uh, that I was, uh, uh, this was 1988, yeah. and prior to night, and uh, I was in the, uh, I was working, mm -hmm. and I was in the Foreign Service, okay. so I was overseas a good part of the time. So I myself uh, was not a contributor to the passage of the Civil Liberties Act. But uh, now, uh, in my position as the Executive Director of the Japanese American Veterans Association, it is my job to articulate as best I can uh, what has happened. And uh, just going back to civil liberty, uh, the civil liberties act, like, what would you say that has meant to the nation as a whole uh, in regards to you know, finally getting it to pass and finally getting that acknowledgement? How, how would you say that's, you know, just... As, uh, as Secretary Mineta said, just, this is... Just look at it right here. Secretary Mineta said, this is not a Japanese-American situation. This is an American issue. And how this is important is that by the President of the United States issuing a public apology for what transpired in the, in the early 1940s, the incarceration of 120,000 Vietnamese, Huge constitutional blunder. Huge. 